All right, right here we go ahead and talk about the conversion kit from a manual awning to a power awning. Excuse me, to a power awning. Now, this 12 volt power awning, this is a 69 inch long or tall arm. This can be used for manual awning, so your manual pull strap awnings, or if you want to convert your Dometic or Carefree awning to a Solera awning. So let's go ahead and open the box now and see what we got inside. Inside the box, we have our two head assemblies. We've got our drive side head assembly and our idle side head assembly. And then also inside the box, you've got this plastic bag. Inside the plastic bag, you have two separate manuals. One for the instructions on how to install and convert a manual awning to a power awning. And the other one to help you convert your carefree or Dometic awning to a Solera awning. And then we have new end caps. They're still in there. Zip ties, which we'll need for installation. New wall switch, and another small bag of fasteners that we'll need for this installation as well. So if we're gonna be converting our manual uh, pull strap awning, we're gonna have to have new end caps, and that's why these are in this bag. We'll go ahead and attach the head assembly to our roll tube here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna line up this hole on the hole with our end cap, Get those two holes lined up. Once those two holes are lined up, we're gonna take our wax screw and we're gonna go ahead and seat this screw so it's securing all of this together, but we don't want it uh, to be over tightened. So we're actually gonna leave this screw uh, just offset by an eighth of an inch. Now that that one's done, let's go ahead and move down to the other set side of our awning and get that end cap secured to our roll tube. We've got our center line marked. That's where we know we're putting our mount arms at. The next thing we wanna do is, I've already done this to the rest of the rail, if you didn't wanna watch that entire portion though, but this is just silicone spray. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in this rail here. That's where our poly cord on our fabric's gonna ride through. The last step before we put any fabric on we take our flathead screwdriver, put it in the end of our awning rail here, and then we want to flex that screwdriver up and down. That'll spread out that channel so that that fabric can ride through there a little easier. Next thing you want to look out for, so you're not uh, scratching up your brand new fabric when you go to install it, any burrs, anything that could get caught up on that fabric and potentially cut into it or damage it, we want to get that out of the way as well. So let's go ahead and let's get our fabric on here, get these arms attached. And move on to our move on to our next step. So you got two poly cords, two poly cords up towards the top here. The first poly cord is on the end of your fabric. That poly cord goes through that awning rail. That second poly cord would be for any optional lights you may have. All right. Now I want to get this centered, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I get this guy mounted. So I'm not covering any holes, or excuse me, I'm not covering any lights or not going over the window or anything along those lines. And then I want to make sure it's up as high as I can get it against my rail here. So if I need this to, my guy here to spread out a little bit, we can do that. And once I get it up here, I've got two assistants here that are going to help me hold it in place. I'm going to attach my first screw. that first screws in position now I can kind of adjust or shift this as needed what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and secure the opposing side and get that fastened now we're gonna go ahead and cut our zip ties after we cut our zip ties we're gonna go ahead and remove the safety tape here now safety tape just let you know that there's some pinch factors that you're gonna to want to watch out for uh, during installation and also operation now, the zip tie is actually behind your mount arm, so that's why we didn't want to fasten all these screws down just yet. 
Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to pull that zip tie out of the way. The other thing you want to keep in mind is when we first put the fabric on, we took a roll, uh, we unwound the fabric about one turn. That allows the arms here to kind of come out a little bit so you can gain access to your motor wires um, and run that motor to uh, extend this awning the rest of the way so we can finish our installation. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fish out. We've got the awning kind of away from the mount arm here, or the outer arm away from the mount arm here. We're gonna go ahead and fish out our power and ground wires. Now the power wire to extend this in this case is gonna be our white wire. So we're gonna go ahead and take our cordless drill battery, take our white wire, put it on our positive terminal, and our red wire will be the ground. So we'll take that and we'll stick that in our ground side of our battery. We're gonna go ahead and extend this awning all the way out. Next step here, we wanna get our wires sticking out the side of our coach. We wanna get them into our mount arm there. So we'll go ahead and remove this wire cover. Set this off to the side, save that for later. <clears throat> then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fish our two wires, we're gonna pull them through our mount arm here so that we can wire our coach up later. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna verify that our mount arm is parallel. So we're actually gonna to go to the door over here, the entry door on the unit, and we're gonna take two measurements, one towards the bottom here, and then one up towards the center, and verify whether that arm needs to go to the left or to the right at all. So we'll go ahead and feed our tape measure out. And we're sitting good down there. Let's see where we're at up here. And we'll see if we need to shift. And actually we are dead center on. So now that we've verified that we're center there, what we'll do is we'll take two fasteners at the bottom, two fasteners in the center, and that will complete the installation of mounting the arm. completed mounting our drive side. Now we're over here on our idle side. We're gonna go ahead and verify that this arm is parallel. We're gonna measure from the outside of this arm right to the edge of our baggage door. It's actually dead on. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and drop one screw on the floor for good luck. We need to hook up power and ground coming out of the coach to our power and ground to our awning motor. So you'll have to determine which set of wires you have coming out of the coach, which one's power and ground. Ours just happens to be this yellow one. So we'll go ahead and wire nut that to the 12 volt power side white wire. Once those two are nutted together, go ahead and connect our ground wires. And don't forget, wherever you're getting power from, that wire needs to be hooked up to a 15 amp fuse uh, per RVIA code. Now what we'll do is we'll just shove these wires, kind of push them back into the wall there, and get those wires seated in there. That's fine. Now, for the power wire for our awning, you don't have to get that all shoved back in there. That's all. You might have a little bit left over. What we can do is when we put our wire cover back on, that kind of black piece of plastic that we took off earlier, we can kind of loop this wire back up a little bit, and that wire cover will secure that in place. So we'll show you that here later. Next thing we want to do, since we're down here, we're going to go ahead and use our sealant, and we're going to cover up any screws that we put into the sidewall of the coach. And then we're also gonna cover up the hole for where we fed our wires through. 
So let's go ahead and wire up our switch. <clears throat> We've got main power and ground hooked up to our ground inside the coach and then power going to our battery. On that power wire we have that 15 amp fuse. Down here we have this solid yellow wire and this solid black wire. The solid yellow wire is going to send 12 volt signal out to our awning and then the black wire is ground. Now for operating the awning that will get switched inside of our switch here. So first things first let's go ahead and get the power hooked up to the coach from the coach to our switch. Then we'll do our ground wire. And you can wire nut them or you can use, we're going to use Wagos uh, now. So I'm just showing you the two different methods on how you can connect well, some of the different methods on how you can connect the wires. So this white wire, that's going to get hooked up to our yellow 12 volt extend signal. Go ahead and put one wire in there. Second wire in there. Now these come in three, twos, and fives. We just happen to be using a three port today. And then the yellow, excuse me, the blue wire, that's going to go to our black wire that is ground at our awning. Then go ahead and put this in the wall, back in the cabinet rather. Then we'll get our screws and we'll go ahead and Fasten that guy right there. Now we've ran our awning in and out several times. We've verified that the awning is square on our roll tube. If you find that the awning needs to be pulled one way or the other, that's fine. You can go ahead and kind of pull on that awning to the left or to the right so you get that awning square. You can also measure um, on your diagonals to determine that fabric is square as well. Once you've determined that, that fabric is square, you're going to take your polycord screw and you're going to come in from an inch of the edge, you're going to go no more than an inch in, you're going to go right down through that awning rail. Now. Once that screw is secured, that'll keep that fabric from shifting on this end, but we need to go down to the other side, secure that second polycord screw. That way our fabric isn't able to shift the other direction as well. 